Hi, I would like to talk about Plinker and how it can detect an association with binary traits. Uh, so Plinker is an R package that works with Plink 1 and Plink 2. Uh, it installs them separately, so you can just say, oh, all right, I want to use Plink 2 for this and Plink 1.7 for that analysis. Um, so let's talk about, uh, so there's a vignette in Plinker, how to detect associations with a binary trait. And the binary trait in this case is synonymous with the case control variable. So let's say if you have a disease, uh, either you're like the case or you're the control, and uh, that's a binary trait. And I will use these two traits synonymously here. Um, and we're going to detect associations between a genotype and a phenotype. And the phenotype is the binary trait. And what we're going to do, we're going to uh, use the data that uh, the, the example files that Plink has supplied. And of course, with Plinker, there's a function called run Plink, uh, in which you can do this directly. You can run Plink with any command line arguments you want. But Plinker also has a function called a SOC. Uh, this is it. This is where you call uh, the association function, which calls uh, Plink to do the association for you without create um, without creating all those files locally and delete them in the end and those kind of things so this is a higher level way to detect those associations using plink on a binary trait so we need to have plinker installed of course and um, this thing yet it's uh, it will tell you if you didn't install plink yet you can install plinks to install all the supported versions of plink which are three at the moment, version 1.7, 1.9, and version 2.0 alpha. Um, of course, this vignette will only make sense if Plink is actually installed, but uh, it can also run without Plink installed. We're going to detect an association with one binary trait. Uh, and there are two uh, tables you will need. Um, one is called the map. Uh, it's a file, it's a mapping table, which contains a location of single nucleotide polymorphism, the SNPs, um, and I'll show it below. And we also need a pedigree table, the dot pad uh, table, which contains both the pedigrees, but also the SNP values and also the binary trait values. Uh, last uh, and definitely the least, uh, the minor allele frequency. So Plink can, uh, you can let Plink say, all right, I want to check the traits that have a minor allele frequency of above a certain value. Uh, well, with Plinker, you can do that on the data itself when it's in memory. Um, so Plinker always sets this to the lowest possible value to include all the traits in the analysis uh, if it uses a higher function level function like in this case. Else, of course, you can uh, change this value if you disagree with that. You can override it. But by default in Plinker, this is set to a very low value. So we need, um, we need those two three things. And there's a function that gives exactly those three things. It's called create test SOC params. So a SOC is shorthand of association, obviously, and it's named after the SOC flag in Plink. Uh, so that's why it's called a SOC instead of association, what, uh, what I would be tended to use. And we get these testing params, so called a SOC params, very, um, well, very inspired naming there. So in the SOC params are three things again, a map, pad, and my real figure. So let's take a look at the mapping table. This is how it's looked. This is the, these are the default this is a file that's default in Plink 1.9. Uh, it's called test.map. Looks like this. It has two SNPs uh, on, uh, actually, this is the same chromosome uh, at different base pairs, base pair 1, base pair 2. It also have a position in centimorgans, which is set to 0, which means that it won't be used in the analysis. Um, so I'm going to use that one. Uh, the pedigree table also supplied by Plink 1.7. Uh, looks like this, um, so it's full. Yeah. So we see that all the individuals are unrelated because they have a different family ID. Within the family, they have their own unique ID, but there's only one, so it's always unique. Uh, father and mom, we don't care about them. Sex code is one, uh, which means it's males, I think, but could be females as well. This is the phenotype, the case control code. I think one is the case, two is the control. That's irrelevant for this uh, for this for, for this video, but one of the two is the case, one of the two is the control. And these are uh, the genotypes. So we have SNP uh, 1, A and B, because it's a diploid organism, and SNP 2, A and B, because it's a diploid organism. Uh, so this is also supplied by Plink 1.9. This is how it looks like. 
Um, so this is all we base our analysis on. So that's not much, so don't expect a strong association here. So the main relief frequency is uh, by default set to a very low value. Um, so we'll be using all data. So, and then it's actually very easy on those uh, parameters that contain everything we need, we just call a SOC. Uh, and then uh, we get these results. So this is how you do an analysis. Um, so this is all, uh, these are all uh, Plink names. So if you ever see a capital case in Plinker, it's because Plink does so. Um, these are the, these are the, this is the legend, this is the description as from the uh, documentation. And we can find that the p-value for SNP2 is lower for the um, phenotype. So SNP2 is uh, has a stronger effect, has an effect, or it, it's, it is likelier to have a significant effect on the trait than SNP1, because SNP1 has a lower p-value. Uh, yeah, and uh, you can also take a look at the chi-square and the uh, odds ratios here as well. Um, but odd ratio, well, if it's not significant, you don't need to look at it. So in both cases, it's not significant. So we don't need to look at the odd ratio or using the chi-square test here at all. So this video should show you how easy it is to do and to detect an association using Plinker that calls Plink in the back. Uh, so there is, uh, so Plinker nowadays works also with Plink 2. It's also tested to work under Windows using AppVayer. It is tested to work under Mac, but not tested to work on Mac code copies 100%. That's good stuff. All right, so that's all I want to say, and I wish you a very good day. Bye.